Much of the history of Algeria has taken place on the fertile coastal plain of North Africa, which is often called the Maghreb. North Africa served as a transit region for people moving towards Europe or the Middle East, thus, the region's inhabitants have been influenced by populations from other areas, including the Carthaginians, Romans, and Vandals. The region was conquered by the Muslims in the early 8th century AD, but broke off from the Umayyad Caliphate after the Berber Revolt of 740. During the Ottoman period, Algeria became an important city in the Mediterranean Sea which led to many naval conflicts. The last significant events in the country's recent history have been the Algerian War and Algerian Civil War. Prehistory Evidence of the early human occupation of Algeria is demonstrated by the discovery of 1.8 million-year-old Old Allen stone tools found at Ain Hanuk in 1992. In 1954 fossilized Homo erectus bones were discovered by C. Aramberg at Ternifine that are 700,000 years old. Neolithic civilization developed in the Saharan and Mediterranean Maghreb between 6000 and 2000 BC. This type of economy, richly depicted in the Tassili Najer cave paintings in southeastern Algeria, predominated in the Maghreb until the Classical period. New Media Phoenician traders arrived on the North African coast around 900 BC and established Carthage around 800 BC. During the Classical period, Berber civilization was already at a stage in which agriculture, manufacturing, trade, and political organization supported several states. Trade links between Carthage and the Berbers in the interior grew, but territorial expansion also resulted in the enslavement or military recruitment of some Berbers and in the extraction of tribute from others. The Carthaginian state declined because of successive defeats by the Romans in the Punic Wars, and in 146 BC, the city of Carthage was destroyed. As Carthaginian power waned, the influence of Berber leaders in the hinterland grew. By the 2nd century BC, several large but loosely administered Berber kingdoms had emerged. After that, King Massinissa managed to unify Numidia under his rule. Roman Empire Madison was a king of independent kingdoms of the Numidians, between 12 and 3 BC. Christianity arrived in the 2nd century. By the end of the 4th century, the settled areas had become Christianized, and some Berber tribes had converted en masse. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Algeria came under the control of the Vandal Kingdom. Later, the Eastern Roman Empire conquered Algeria from the Vandals, incorporating it into the Praetorian Prefecture of Africa and later the Exarchate of Africa. The Sahara Desert covers 85% of Algeria. Middle Ages from the 8th century Umayyad conquest of North Africa led by Musa bin Nusayr, Arab colonization started. The 11th century invasion of migrants from the Arabian Peninsula brought Oriental tribal customs. The introduction of Islam and Arabic had a profound impact on North Africa. The new religion and language introduced changes in social and economic relations, and established links with the Arab world through acculturation and assimilation. Berber Dynasties According to historians of the Middle Ages, the Berbers are divided into two branches, both are from their ancestor Mazik. The two branches Bach and Barnes are divided into tribes, and each Maghreb region is made up of several tribes. The large Berber tribes or peoples are Sanaja, Huara, Zinata, Mesmuda, Kutama, Awarba, Bargawada, etc. Each tribe is divided into sub-tribes. All these tribes have independence and territorial decisions. Several Berber dynasties emerged during the Middle Ages, in North Africa, Sudan, in Andalusia, Italy, in Mali, Niger, Senegal, and Egypt. Ibn Khaldun made a table of Berber dynasties, Zirid, Banu Afran, Magrawa, Almoravid, Hamadid, Amahad Caliphate, Marinid, Zianid, Wat Asid, Meknes, Hefeside dynasty, Fatimids. The invasion of the Banu Halal Arab tribes in the 11th century, Sak Kairouan, and the area under Zirid control was reduced to the coastal region, and the Arab conquests fragmented into petty Bedouin emirates. Medieval Muslim Algeria The second Arab military expeditions into the Maghreb, between 642 and 669, resulted in the spread of Islam. The Umayyads recognized that the strategic necessity of dominating the Mediterranean dictated a concerted military effort on the North African front. By 711 Umayyad forces helped by Berber converts to Islam had conquered all of North Africa. 
In 750 the Abbasids succeeded the Umayyads as Muslim rulers and moved the caliphate to Baghdad. Under the Abbasids, Berber Karijit Sufri Banu Afran were opposed to Umayyad and Abbasids. After, the Rustumids actually ruled most of the central Maghreb from Tahirt, southwest of Algiers. The Imams gained a reputation for honesty, piety, and justice, and the court of Tahirt was noted for its support of scholarship. The Rustumid Imams failed, however, to organize a reliable standing army, which opened the way for Tahirt's demise under the assault of the Fatimid dynasty. The Fatimids left the rule of most of Algeria to the Zirids and Hamadid, a Berber dynasty that centered significant local power in Algeria for the first time, but who were still at war with Banu Afran and Marawa. This period was marked by constant conflict, political instability, and economic decline. Following a large incursion of Arab Bedouin from Egypt beginning in the first half of the 11th century, the use of Arabic spread to the countryside, and sedentary Berbers were gradually Arabized. The Almoravid movement developed early in the 11th century among the Sanaja Berbers of southern Morocco. The movement's initial impetus was religious, an attempt by a tribal leader to impose moral discipline and strict adherence to Islamic principles on followers. But the Almoravid movement shifted to engaging in military conquest after 1054. By 1106, the Almoravids had conquered the Maghreb as far east as Algiers and Morocco, and Spain up to the Ebro River. Like the Almoravids, the Amahads found their inspiration in Islamic reform. The Amahads took control of Morocco by 1146, captured Algiers around 1151, and by 1160 had completed the conquest of the central Maghreb. The zenith of Amahad power occurred between 1163 and 1199. For the first time, the Maghreb was united under a local regime, but the continuing wars in Spain overtaxed the resources of the Amahads, and in the Maghreb their position was compromised by factional strife and a renewal of tribal warfare. In the central Maghreb, the Abdelwadid founded a dynasty that ruled the kingdom of Plemken in Algeria. For more than 300 years, until the region came under Ottoman suzerainty in the 16th century, the Zionids kept a tenuous hold in the central Maghreb. Many coastal cities asserted their autonomy as municipal republics governed by merchant oligarchies, tribal chieftains from the surrounding countryside, or the privateers who operated out of their ports. Nonetheless, Plemken, the Pearl of the Maghreb, prospered as a commercial center. Christian Reconquest of Spain The final triumph of the 700-year Christian Reconquest of Spain was marked by the fall of Granada in 1492. Christian Spain imposed its influence on the Maghreb coast by constructing fortified outposts and collecting tribute. But Spain never sought to extend its North African conquests much beyond a few modest enclaves. Privateering was an age-old practice in the Mediterranean, and North African rulers engaged in it increasingly in the late 16th and early 17th centuries because it was so lucrative. Until the 17th century the Barbary pirates used galleys, but a Dutch renegade of the name of Zeman Donziger taught them the advantage of using sailing ships. Algeria became the privateering city-state par excellence, and two privateer brothers were instrumental in extending Ottoman influence in Algeria. At about the time Spain was establishing its presidios in the Maghreb, the Muslim privateer brothers Aruj and Ker ad-Din, the latter known to Europeans as Barbarossa, or Red Beard, were operating successfully off Tunisia. In 1516 Aruj moved his base of operations to Algiers but was killed in 1518. Ker ad-Din succeeded him as military commander of Algiers, and the Ottoman Sultan gave him the title of Bailerby. Spanish Enclaves The Spanish expansionist policy in North Africa began with the Catholic monarchs and the regent Cisneros, once the Reconquista and the Iberian Peninsula was finished. That way, several towns and outposts in the Algerian coast were conquered and occupied, Mers el Kabir, Oran, Algiers and Bugia. The Spanish conquest of Oran was won with much bloodshed, 4,000 Algerians were massacred, and up to 8,000 were taken prisoner. For about 200 years, Oran's inhabitants were virtually held captive in their fortress walls, ravaged by famine and plague. Spanish soldiers, too, were irregularly fed and paid. The Spaniards left Algiers in 1529, Bugia in 1554, Mers el Kabir and Oran in 1708. The Spanish returned in 1732 when the armada of the Duke of Montemar was victorious in the Battle of Ain el Turk and retook Oran and Mers el Kabir. The Spanish massacred many Muslim soldiers. 
In 1751, a Spanish adventurer, named John Gascon, obtained permission, and vessels and fireworks, to go against Algiers, and set fire, at night, to the Algerian fleet. The plan, however, miscarried. In 1775, Charles III of Spain sent a large force to attack Algiers, under the command of Alejandro O'Reilly, resulting in a disastrous defeat. The Algerians suffered 5,000 casualties. The Spanish navy bombarded Algiers in 1784, over 20,000 cannonballs were fired, much of the city and its fortifications were destroyed and most of the Algerian fleet was sunk. Oran and Mers el Kebir were held until 1792, when they were sold by the King Charles IV to the Bay of Algiers. Ottoman Era Under Ker ad-Din's regency, Algiers became the center of Ottoman authority in the Maghreb. For 300 years, Algeria was a vassal state of the Ottoman Empire under a regency that had Algiers as its capital. Subsequently, with the institution of a regular Ottoman administration, governors with the title of Pasha ruled. Turkish was the official language. In 1671 a new leader took power, adopting the title of Dey. In 1710 the Dey persuaded the Sultan to recognize him and his successors as regent, replacing the Pasha in that role. Although Algiers remained a part of the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman government ceased to have effective influence there. European maritime powers paid the tribute demanded by the rulers of the privateering states of North Africa to prevent attacks on their shipping. The Napoleonic Wars of the early 19th century diverted the attention of the maritime powers from suppressing piracy. But when peace was restored to Europe in 1815, Algiers found itself at war with Spain, the Netherlands, Prussia, Denmark, Russia, and Naples. Algeria and surrounding areas, collectively known as the Barbary States, were responsible for piracy in the Mediterranean Sea, as well as the enslaving of Christians, actions which brought them into the First and Second Barbary War with the United States of America. French Rule 19th Century Colonialism North African boundaries have shifted during various stages of the conquests. The borders of modern Algeria were expanded by the French, whose colonization began in 1830. To benefit French colonists and nearly the entirety of whom lived in urban areas, northern Algeria was eventually organized into overseas departments of France, with representatives in the French National Assembly. France controlled the entire country, but the traditional Muslim population in the rural areas remained separated from the modern economic infrastructure of the European community. As a result of what the French considered an insult to the French consul in Algiers by the day in 1827, France blockaded Algiers for three years. In 1830, France invaded and occupied the coastal areas of Algeria, citing a diplomatic incident as Casas Belli. Hussein Day went into exile. French colonization then gradually penetrated southwards, and came to have a profound impact on the area and its populations. The European conquest, initially accepted in the Algiers region, was soon met by a rebellion, led by Abdel Qadir, which took roughly a decade for the French troops to put down after the pacification campaign, in which the French used chemical weapons, mass executions of civilians and prisoners, concentration camps and many other atrocities. By 1848 nearly all of northern Algeria was under French control, and the new government of the French Second Republic declared the occupied lands an integral part of France. Three civil territories Algiers, Oran, and Constantine, were organized as French departments under a civilian government. In addition to enduring the affront of being ruled by a foreign, non-Muslim power, many Algerians lost their lands to the new government or to colonists. Traditional leaders were eliminated, co-opted, or made irrelevant, and the traditional educational system was largely dismantled, social structures were stressed to the breaking point. From 1856, native Muslims and Jews were viewed as French subjects not citizens. However, in 1865, Napoleon III allowed them to apply for full French citizenship, a measure that few took, since it involved renouncing the right to be governed by Sharia law in personal matters, and was considered a kind of apostasy. In 1870, the Cremieu decree made French citizenship automatic for Jewish natives, a move which largely angered many Muslims, which resulted in the Jews being seen as the accomplices of the colonial power by anti-colonial Algerians. Nonetheless, this period saw progress in health, some infrastructures, and the overall expansion of the economy of Algeria, 
as well as the formation of new social classes, which, after exposure to ideas of equality and political liberty, would help propel the country to independence. During the colonization France focused on eradicating the local culture by destroying hundreds years old palaces and important buildings. It is estimated that around half of Algiers, a city founded in the 10th century, was destroyed. Many segregatory laws were levied against the Algerians and their culture. Rise of Algerian Nationalism and French Resistance A new generation of Islamic leadership emerged in Algeria at the time of World War I and grew to maturity during the 1920s and 1930s. Various groups were formed in opposition to French rule, most notable the National Liberation Front and the National Algerian Movement. Colons, or, more popularly, Pied Noir dominated the government and controlled the bulk of Algeria's wealth. Throughout the colonial era, they continued to block or delay all attempts to implement even the most modest reforms. But from 1933 to 1936, mounting social, political, and economic crises in Algeria induced the indigenous population to engage in numerous acts of political protest. The government responded with more restrictive laws governing public order and security. Algerian Muslims rallied to the French side at the start of World War II as they had done in World War I. But the Colons were generally sympathetic to the collaborationist Vichy regime established following France's defeat by Nazi Germany. After the fall of the Vichy regime in Algeria as a result of Operation Torch, the Free French Commander-in-Chief in North Africa slowly rescinded repressive Vichy laws, despite opposition, colon extremists. In March 1943, Muslim leader Ferhat Abbas presented the French administration with the Manifesto of the Algerian People, signed by 56 Algerian nationalist and international leaders. The manifesto demanded an Algerian constitution that would guarantee immediate and effective political participation and legal equality for Muslims. Instead, the French administration in 1944 instituted a reform package, based on the 1936 Violette Plan, that granted full French citizenship only to certain categories of meritorious Algerian Muslims, who numbered about 60,000. In April 1945 the French had arrested the Algerian nationalist leader Messali Hajj. On May 1 the followers of his party du Pupil Algerian participated in demonstrations which were violently put down by the police. Several Algerians were killed. The tensions between the Muslim and Kolan communities exploded on May 8, 1945, B.E. Day, causing the Sedif and Guelma massacre. When a Muslim march was met with violence, marchers rampaged. The army and police responded by conducting a prolonged and systematic radicage of suspected centers of dissidents. According to official French figures, 1,500 Muslims died as a result of these countermeasures. Other estimates vary from 6,000 to as high as 45,000 killed. Many nationalists drew the conclusion that independence could not be won by peaceful means, and so started organizing for violent rebellion. In August 1947, the French National Assembly approved the government-proposed Organic Statute of Algeria. This law called for the creation of an Algerian assembly with one house representing Europeans and meritorious Muslims and the other representing the remaining 8 million or more Muslims. Muslim and Kolan deputies alike abstained or voted against the statute but for diametrically opposed reasons, the Muslims because it fell short of their expectations and the Kolans because it went too far. Algerian War of Independence The Algerian War of Independence, brutal and long, was the most recent major turning point in the country's history. Although often fratricidal, it ultimately united Algerians and seared the value of independence and the philosophy of anti-colonialism into the national consciousness. In the early morning hours of November 1, 1954, the National Liberation Front launched attacks throughout Algeria in the opening salvo of a war of independence. An important watershed in this war was the massacre of civilians by the FLN near the town of Philippeville in August 1955. The government claimed it killed 1,273 guerrillas in retaliation, according to the FLN, 12,000 Muslims perished in an orgy of bloodletting by the armed forces and police, as well as colon gangs. After Philippeville, all-out war began in Algeria. The FLN fought largely using guerrilla tactics whilst the French counterinsurgency tactics often included severe reprisals and repression. Eventually, protracted negotiations led to a ceasefire signed by France and the FLN on March 18, 1962, at Evian, France. 
The Evian Accords also provided for continuing economic, financial, technical, and cultural relations, along with interim administrative arrangements until a referendum on self-determination could be held. The Evian Accords guaranteed the religious and property rights of French settlers, but the perception that they would not be respected led to the exodus of one million Pienoir and Harkas. Abusive tactics of the French army remains a controversial subject in France to this day. Deliberate illegal methods were used, such as beatings, mutilations, hanging by the feet or hands, torture by electroshock, waterboarding, sleep deprivation and sexual assaults, among others. French war crimes against Algerian civilians were also committed, including indiscriminate shootings of civilians, rape, imprisonment without food in small cells, throwing prisoners out of helicopters to their death or into the sea with concrete on their feet, and burying people alive. The FLN also committed many atrocities, both against French Pienoir and against fellow Algerians whom they deemed as supporting the French. These crimes included killing unarmed men, women and children, rape and disembowelment or decapitation of women and murdering children by slitting their throats or banging their heads against walls. Between 350,000 and 1 million Algerians are estimated to have died during the war, and more than 2 million, out of a total Muslim population of 9 or 10 million, were made into refugees or forcibly relocated into government-controlled camps. Much of the countryside and agriculture was devastated, along with the modern economy, which had been dominated by urban European settlers. French sources estimated that at least 70,000 Muslim civilians were killed or abducted and presumed killed, by the FLN during the Algerian War. Nearly one million people of mostly French, Spanish and Italian descent left the country at independence due to the privileges that they lost as settlers and their unwillingness to be on equal footing with indigenous Algerians along with them left most Algerians of Jewish descent and those Muslim Algerians who had supported a French Algeria. 30 to 150,000 pro-French Muslims were also killed in Algeria by FLN and post-war reprisals. Independent Algeria Ben Bella Presidency the referendum was held in Algeria on July 1, 1962, and France declared Algeria independent on 3 July. On September 8, 1963, a constitution was adopted by referendum, and later that month, Ahmed Ben Bella was formally elected the first president, after receiving support from the military, led by Hwari Boumediene. The war for independence and its aftermath had severely disrupted Algeria's society and economy. In addition to the physical destruction, the exodus of the colons deprived the country of most of its managers, civil servants, engineers, teachers, physicians, and skilled workers. The homeless and displaced numbered in the hundreds of thousands, many suffering from illness, and some 70% of the workforce was unemployed. The months immediately following independence witnessed the Palmel rush of Algerians, their government, and its officials to claim the property and jobs left behind by the Europeans. In the 1963 March decrees, Ben Bella declared that all agricultural, industrial, and commercial properties previously owned and operated by Europeans were vacant, thereby legalizing confiscation by the state. A new constitution drawn up under close FLN supervision was approved by nationwide referendum in September 1963, and Ben Bella was confirmed as the party's choice to lead the country for a five-year term. The military played an important role in Ben Bella's administration. Since Ben Bella recognized the role that the military played in bringing him to power, Ben Bella appointed senior officers as ministers and other important positions within the new state, including naming Boumediene as the defense minister. They played a core role into implementing the country's security and foreign policy. Under the new constitution, Ben Bella as president combined the functions of chief of state and head of government with those of supreme commander of the armed forces. He formed his government without needing legislative approval and was responsible for the definition and direction of its policies. There was no effective institutional check on its powers. Opposition leader Hossein A. Ahmed quit the National Assembly in 1963 to protest the increasingly dictatorial tendencies of the regime and formed a clandestine resistance movement the front of socialist forces dedicated to overthrowing the Ben Bella regime by force. Late summer 1963 saw sporadic incidents attributed to the FFS. More serious fighting broke out a year later. The army moved quickly and enforced to crush the rebellion. As Minister of Defense, Hwari Boumediene had no qualms about sending the army to put down regional uprisings because he felt they posed a threat to the state. 
Ben Bella also attempted to co-opt allies from among some of those regionalists, in order to undermine the ability of military commanders to influence foreign and security policy. Tensions increased between Hwari Boumedian and Ahmed Ben Bella. In 1965 the military toppled Ahmed Ben Bella, and Hwari Boumedian became head of state. The 1965 coup and the Boumedian military regime. On June 19, 1965, Hwari Boumedian deposed Ahmed Ben Bella in a military coup d'état that was both swift and bloodless. Ben Bella disappeared, and would not be seen again until he was released from house arrest in 1980 by Boumedian's successor, Colonel Chadley Benjadid. Boumedian immediately dissolved the National Assembly and suspended the 1963 Constitution. Political power resided in the Council of the Revolution, a predominantly military body intended to foster cooperation among various factions in the army and the party. Hwari Boumedian's position as head of government and of state was initially not secure partly because of his lack of a significant power base outside the armed forces. He relied strongly on a network of former associates known as the Ujda Group, but he could not fully dominate the fractious regime. This situation may have accounted for his deference to collegial rule. Over Boumedian's 11-year reign as the chairman of the Revolutionary Council, it introduced two formal mechanisms, such as the People's Municipal Assembly and the People's Provincial Assembly for popular participation in politics. Under his rule, leftist and socialist concepts are merged into Islam. Boumedian also used Islam opportunistically to consolidate his power. On one side, he made token concessions and cosmetic changes, such as appointing Ahmed Talib Ibrahimi in charge of national education in 1965, or adopting policies like criminalizing gambling, establishing Friday as the national holiday and dropping plans to introduce birth control to paint an Islamic image of the new government. But on the other hand, the government also repressed Islamic groups progressively, such as ordering the dissolution of al qiyam Following attempted coups, most notably that of Chief of Staff Colonel Tahar Spiri in December 1967, and a failed assassination attempt in, Boumedian consolidated power and forced military and political factions to submit. He took a systematic, authoritarian approach to state building, arguing that Algeria needed stability and an economic base before any political institutions. Eleven years after Hwari Boumedian took power, after much public debate, a long-promised new constitution was promulgated in November 1976. The constitution restored the National Popular Assembly and it was given legislative, consent and oversight functions. Boumedian was later elected president with 95% of the cast votes. Benjadid rule, the 1992 coup d'état and the rise of the civil war. Boumedian's death on December 27, 1978 set off a struggle within the FLN to choose a successor. To break a deadlock between two candidates, Colonel Chadli Benjadid, a moderate who had collaborated with Boumedian in deposing Ahmed Ben Bella, was sworn in on February 9, 1979. He was re-elected in 1984 and 1988. After the violent 1988 October riots, a new constitution was adopted in 1989 that allowed the formation of political associations other than the FLN. It also removed the armed forces, which had run the government since the days of Boumedien, from a role in the operation of the government. Among the scores of parties that sprang up under the new constitution, the militant Islamic Salvation Front was the most successful, winning more than 50% of all votes cast in municipal elections in June 1990 as well as in first stage of national legislative elections held in December 1991. The surprising first round of success for the fundamentalist FIS party in the December 1991 balloting caused the army to discuss options to intervene, as officers feared that an Islamist government would interfere their positions and core interests in economic, national security and foreign policy, since the FIS has promised to make a fundamental rehaul of the social, political and economical structure to achieve their radical Islamist agenda. Senior military figures, such as Defense Minister Khalid Nezer, Chief of the General Staff Abdel Malik Ganesha and other leaders of the Navy, Gendarmerie and Security Services, all agreed that the FIS should be stopped from gaining power from the polling box. They also agreed that Ben Jadid would need to be removed from office because he was the biggest obstacle to achieving the plan, due to his determination to hold the second round of ballots. If Ben Jadid resigns, not only it will remove the obstacle to the military's plan, it would also suspend the second ballot. 
On January 11, 1992, Ben Jadid announced his resignation on national television, saying it was necessary to protect the unity of the people and the security of the country. Later on the same day, the High Council of State, which was composed of five people, was appointed to carry out duties of the president. The new government, led by Sid Ahmed Ghazali also banned all political activity at mosques and began turning away people from attending prayers at the popular mosques. The FIS was legally dissolved by Interior Minister Lerbi Belkir on 9th of February, for attempting insurrections against the state. A state of emergency was also declared and extraordinary powers, such as curtailing the right to associate, were installed on the regime. Between January and March, a growing number of FIS militants were arrested by the military, including Abdul Qader Haqqani and his successors to the FIS leadership, Othman Asani and Rubak Kebir were also detained. Following the announcement to dissolve the FIS and implementing a state of emergency on 9th of February, security forces used their new powers to conduct large-scale arrests of FIS members and house them in five detention centers in the Sahara. Between 5,000 to 30,000 people were detained. The fundamentalist response has resulted in a continuous low-grade, conflict, the Algerian civil war, with the secular state apparatus, which nonetheless has allowed elections featuring pro-government and moderate religious-based parties. This civil war lasted until 2002. Civil War in Bouflika After Chadli Benjadid was removed from the presidency in the coup of 1992, a series of figureheads were selected by the military to assume the presidency, as officers were reluctant to assume public political power even though they have manifested control over the country. It was because the military's senior leaders felt the need to give a civilian face to the new political regime they had hastily constructed in the aftermath of the ousting of Chadli and the termination of elections, and therefore their preference for a civilian face to front the regime. The first of such was Mohamed Boudif, who was appointed president of the HCE in February 1992 after a 27-year exile in Morocco. However, Boudif quickly came to odds with the military, as attempts by the Boudif to appoint his own staff or forming a political party were viewed with suspicion by officers. Boudif also launched initiatives, such as a rigorous anti-corruption campaign in April 1992 and sacking Khaled Nezer from his post as defense minister, which was seen by the military as an attempt to remove their influence, because a genuine campaign could implicate many senior figures who benefited massively and illegally from the system for many years. He was assassinated in June 1992 by one of his bodyguards with Islamist sympathies. Ali Kafi temporarily assumed the HCE presidency after Boudif's death, before Liamine Zerwa was appointed to be a long-term replacement in 1994. However, Zerwa only remained in office for four years before he announced his retirement, as he became embroiled with a clan warfare within the upper classes of the military and fell out with groups of more senior generals. Abdelaziz Bouflika Boumediene's foreign minister succeeded as the president. After the civil war ended, presidential elections were held again in April 1999. Although seven candidates qualified for election, all but Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who has the support of the military as well as the FLN, withdrew on the eve of the election amid charges of electoral fraud and interference from the military. Bouteflika went on to win with 70% of the cast votes. But the civilian government in immediate post-1999 only acts as hijab to run day-to-day -day businesses, while the military still runs the country behind the scenes, as ministerial mandates to individuals were only granted with the military's approval, while different factions of the military invested in various political parties and pressed to use them as pawns to gain influence. The military's influence over politics decreased gradually, leaving Bouteflika with more authority on deciding policy. One reason for such was the senior commanders who dominated the political scene during the 1960s and 1970s started to retire. But Bouteflika's former experiences as Boumediene's foreign minister earned him connections that rejuvenated Algeria's international reputation that was tarnished in the early 1990s. On the domestic front, Bouteflika's policy of national reconciliation to bring a close to violence earned him a popular mandate that helped him to win further terms in 2004, 2009 and 2014. In 2010, journalists gathered to demonstrate for press freedom and against Bouteflika's self-appointed role as editor-in-chief of Algeria's state television station. In February 2011, the government rescinded the state of emergency that had been in place since 1992 but still banned all protest gatherings and demonstrations. However, in April 2011, 
over 2,000 protesters defied an official ban and took to the streets of Algiers, clashing with police forces. Protesters noted that they were inspired by the recent Egyptian revolution, and that Algeria was a police state and corrupt to the bone. In 2019, after 30 years in office, Bouflika announced in February that he would seek a fifth term of office. This sparked widespread discontent around Algeria and protests in Algiers. Despite later attempts at saying he would resign after his term finished in late April, Bouflika resigned on 2nd of April, after the chief of the army, Ahmed Gate Salah, made a declaration that he was unfit for office. Despite Gate Salah being loyal to Bouflika, many in the military identify with civilians, as nearly 70% of the army are conscripts who are required to serve for 18 months. Since demonstrators demand a change to the whole system, army officers aligned themselves with demonstrators in the hopes of surviving the revolution and retaining their own positions. After Bouflika After the resignation of Abdelaziz Bouflika on April 9, 2019 the president of the Council of the Nation Abdelkader Benshala became acting president of the country. Following the presidential election on December 12, 2019 Abdelmajid Tebboune was appointed president, after taking 58% of the votes, against candidates from both main parties. On the eve of the first anniversary of the Hirak movement, President Abdelmajid Tebboune announced in a statement to the Algerian national media that 22nd of February would be declared the Algerian National Day of Fraternity and Cohesion between the people and its army for democracy. In the same statement, Tebboune spoke in favor of the Hirak movement, saying that the blessed Hirak has preserved the country from a total collapse and that he had made a personal commitment to carry out all of the demands. On 21 and February 22, 2020, masses of demonstrators gathered to honor the anniversary of the Hirak movement and the newly established National Day. In an effort to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, Tebboune announced on March 17, 2020 that marches and rallies, whatever their motives would be prohibited. After protesters and journalists were arrested for participating in such marches, Tebboune faced accusations of attempting to silence Algerians. Notably, the government's actions were condemned by Amnesty International, which said in a statement that when all eyes are on the management of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Algerian authorities are devoting time to speeding up the prosecution and trial of activists, journalists, and supporters of the Hirak movement. CNLD estimated that around 70 prisoners of conscience were imprisoned by July 2, 2020 and that several of the imprisoned were arrested for Facebook posts. On December 28, 2019, the then recently inaugurated President Tebboun met with Ahmed Benbatour, the former Algerian head of government, with whom he discussed the foundations of the new republic. On January 8, 2020, Tebboun established a commission of experts composed of 17 members responsible for examining the previous constitution and making any necessary revisions. Led by Ahmed Laraba, the commission was required to submit its proposals to Tebboun directly within the following two months. In a letter to Laraba on the same day, Tebboun outlined seven axes around which the commission should focus its discussion. These areas of focus included strengthening citizens' rights, combating corruption, consolidating the balance of powers in the Algerian government, increasing the oversight powers of parliament, promoting the independence of the judiciary, furthering citizens' equality under the law, and constitutionalizing elections. Tebboun's letter also included a call for an immutable and intangible two-term limit to anyone serving as president, a major point of contention in the initial Hirak movement protests, which were spurred by former President Abdelaziz Bouflika's announcement to run for a fifth term. The preliminary draft revision of the Constitution was publicly published on May 7, 2020, but the Laraba Commission was open to additional proposals from the public until 20 June. By 3 June, the Commission had received an estimated 1,200 additional public proposals. After all revisions were considered by the Laraba Commission, the draft was introduced to the Cabinet of Algeria. The revised Constitution was adopted in the Council of Ministers on 6 September, in the People's National Assembly on 10 September, and Council of the Nation on 12 September, but its implementation is currently contingent on the results of the 1 November referendum. The constitutional changes were approved on the November 1, 2020 referendum, with 66.68% of voters participating in favor of the changes. On February 16, 2021 mass protests and a wave of nationwide rallies and peaceful demonstrations against the government of Abdelmajid Tebboune began.